All right, so the last feature, man, number one, the number one thing, man, that I'm personally hyped for, and that is all right, y'all, so on the other day, right, Apple released a ton of features, man, that's gonna be coming to iOS 15 later this year, around like September timeframe when they actually dropped the iPhone 13. But, but lucky for y'all, I have the Apple developers account, man, and I'm able to show them to you guys early right here on the channel before they actually release to the general public. It's a whole lot to break down, so let's go ahead and hop right into it. iOS 15, man, is the latest update coming to Apple devices. And you guys can see it right here on the screen that they are supporting some pretty older iPhones, which is actually really dope of them to actually support those phones that are literally six to seven years old. And to me, man, that's the main reason why the value of iPhones and just Apple products in general are much higher when it comes to reselling than any other manufacturer that's out there because it holds its value. But that's a whole entirely different video. Now, before we actually get all into this, I want you guys to comment down below right now how many likes are on this video at the time of you guys are watching. I got something for you in this video, so keep watching. Starting with number 12, we have up is new wallpaper so if we go into settings wallpapers and under stills you guys will be able to see the brand new iOS 15 wallpaper and this is what it actually looks like when you guys apply it to the phone looks pretty clean if you ask me now number 11 is the new widgets that have been added to the iPhone now within iOS 14 is when we actually saw widgets actually appear on iPhones for the first time right well in iOS 15 they've added some more widgets to the iPhone so if you guys go ahead and press and hold on the dots at the bottom of the home screen and tap on the plus iPhone icon in the top left corner and scroll down we can actually see that there are now six new widgets that have been added to the widget screen now the app store the contacts find my game center as well as new sleep mode and the mail the mail one is the one that i'm personally excited about because i can finally finally get the latest emails that come in right on my home screen which is just clutch especially for a person like me that is addicted and i mean addicted to checking my gmail account i don't know if that's a good thing or if it's a bad thing but it's a thing. <laughs> now coming in at number 10, man, has to deal with a new feature called Focus. So, see kid, what the heck is Focus, right? Well, I'm glad you asked. It is basically like do not disturb, but on like level a thousand. So let's go ahead and break this down. So if you swipe down from the top here, you guys will see a new Focus option. And basically what this actually does is it gives you guys an option to set your phone on do not disturb, but for like certain tasks. So let's say you guys are working out, right? But you don't wanna necessarily be disturbed with notifications from certain applications or just people then you guys can go ahead and set your phone to allow certain people to be able to contact you while you guys are working out or even set your phone to only show a setup home screen just for working out which is actually really dope let's say you're the type of person like me you want to work out or something like that so if you want to have your apple watch app your health app and even your music app and be the only things that's on your screen then you guys can do that let me show you how to set it up swiping down allows you guys to be able to see all of the ones that are there plus you guys can create your own like I personally did. Now I have my in my zone option. So if you guys go ahead and press on the three dots here, you will see I can have this only be set for one hour or until the evening or until leave a certain geolocation. If you go into settings, here's where I'm allowed to actually set for certain people to be able to contact me or even apps to receive notifications from. If I go ahead and tap on allow people, I can edit or add more contact, then go ahead and switching over to the apps. I can add my apps here for which apps that I wanna be able to receive receive notifications from right now going back out you have time sensitive notifications now this is going to be an area where it's going to allow people and apps to be able to notify you even when you have focus turned on then there's share focus status right this is where the phone will let apps know that you guys have notification silence and it's also going to allow people to notify you anyway if something is important but we're going to talk about that more here in a second now to me this is the dopest part about focus mode is being able to customize your home screen on what you guys see when you guys are in a specific mode so for example I have one page that I've created here just for this mode so right now you guys will see all three pages that I have created that I'm swiping through if I go into focus mode and I change it to in my zone watch what actually happens to this screen now this part is actually pretty dope now you guys got to set this up on your phone and try it out for yourself now you guys can see that my other pages have been removed and if you guys want to get them back all you guys got to do is turn off that focus mode and boom it all comes right back it's like magic 
I'm not even gonna lie, it's kind of crazy. Then you have options here that's gonna allow you guys to be able to dim your lock screen as well to help you guys focus so that way if notifications does pop up, it won't necessarily be as distracting as it would be if you guys had it more bright. And the second to last thing before we move to number nine, and that is smart activation. So if you guys press on the plus icon here, I'm actually able to set a specific time when I actually want my focus mode to actually start. So let's say you like reading every night at 8 p.m., right? Then you automatically want to have your phone go into a read and focus mode at that time and whatever your settings will be is going to be applied, right? Or let's say you want to go ahead and head to work and then every time you guys reach your work address on what you guys have set in the actual application, it's going to switch to a work focus mode based on your phone's location that you guys set in the smart activation area which to me is actually really dope and the last thing I want to talk to you guys about that is in this focus mode and what it does is I told y'all it's like do not disturb on like a level thousand if you tap on phone calls it will give you an option to allow repeated calls this is important as far as emergency features and all of that because if a person calls you twice within a three minute window it will allow the call to go ahead and come through and it will not be silenced as this behavior typically is going to be like an emergency because somebody calling you that much within that short period of time most likely it's an emergency or it could just be a crazy girlfriend or a crazy boyfriend but hey that's y'all lives not mine hey i'm just the messenger don't shoot me <laughs> also real quick once you guys actually have it set on one of your apple devices it will go ahead and apply it across all of the apple devices you guys have on the current ios 15. so moving on to number nine right and that is the redesign of notifications now when you guys actually receive a text message or a notification that pops up on your phone it will now look like this instead of what it looked like in the past honestly y'all I actually like the look of it. I like that it's a slight change, but it also gives me more of like a modern look. And to me, if anything's modern, I'm all over it, man, because we don't do old over here. All right. So number eight, since we're kind of talking about text messaging and all of that type of stuff like that, let's go ahead and talk about the changes that's coming in the messaging app. So the first thing that I have to show you all is stack photos in the messages app. If someone, let's say, sends you guys like five photos, right? Back to back to back to back. Instead of it showing each photo in its own row, now it's actually going to create like this carousel that you guys can just swipe through. It's almost like a mini album. Now, personally, I like this feature because it makes the messaging app look a whole lot cleaner. Then if you guys go ahead and click on the little icon next to it, you guys can save all of the photos in the library at one single time, which is clutch. Also, if you guys tap on the photos, it will allow you to see each one in a full screen mode. Then if you tap on that grid icon with the number of photos that's right next to it on the left-hand side, it will take you to like this grid screen uh, where it's gonna show each photo to me, which is actually dope now another change in messaging is there is a facetime icon in the top right corner which is clutch because now i can just press this icon and start a new facetime video or an audio call right from the messaging app which is really really dope since you guys already seen it then we might as well go ahead and talk about it and that is one of my favorite changes that apple is giving us and that is number seven facetime call changes so how many y'all out there got a group of friends or family members who all y'all got iphones but there's this one family member or friend who rocking an Android phone. So in order for you all to have a group video call, you got to either download Google Meet or Skype just to meet their demands. Well, now with the new FaceTime feature called Create Link, you guys can now send your Android friends a link for them to go ahead and join your FaceTime chat with everybody else so that way they don't feel left out. So how this actually works is if you guys click on Create Link, you're going to see this pop up that's going to give you guys a chance to name your FaceTime link. So let's go ahead and name ours like C-Kid Power Hour or something like that. Now you guys can see the name is going to change here on the top and then from the same screen you guys can either text it email it or just copy it and then send it to someone regardless if they're on an android windows mobile device or even a pc now this feature here is a game changer to me because i have some plans for this feature here in the future so definitely make sure you guys keep it locked here on the channel for that because that's going to be pretty fire now when the person actually gets your message this is actually what they're going to see on their end just the link and it's going to say join my facetime now if you guys are curious like me and you're wondering what if somebody actually clicked on that link before the time frame you guys actually have set to start the meeting so if someone clicks on that join button it will pop up on the meeting creators device to grant access to your meeting this is so clutch man because you don't want somebody to just be able to join in and just click on that link anytime and just have access to your camera on your tablet or your smartphones i'm personally glad that apple actually thought of this scenario because it is clutch and it's all about that privacy so continuing on with that now the next change to facetime is when you guys are actually in one of the calls it looks looks completely different and it has some really dope features. So at the top, you guys will now see access to your text messages that you guys have with that single person or the group of people in that FaceTime. Now the speaker icon here is gonna allow you guys to be able to output the conversation
conversation to a set of speakers or headphones. Now you can also mute the microphone as well as the video button here. And the best option, which is share my screen feature. Now this is clutch and let me tell you guys why. So let's say you're like me, right? And you got people in your family that are not pretty much the most tech savvy people. And they always asking you questions about how to work something on their phone because for some reason like their iPhone doesn't do the same thing that yours does in their eyes, i.e. older people in your family. Now this feature is gonna allow you guys to share your screen and easily be able to walk them through anything. Man, Apple, listen, I take my hat off to y'all, man, because this feature is, let me tell you, boy, whoo, my parents, boy, I, hey, I love them, but man, Technology ain't they thing. <laughs> now, as of right now, this feature is not actually available yet for iOS 15 beta one, but I want you guys to keep it locked right here and subscribe to the channel for that beta two, which I'm sure is gonna be on there and it's gonna be ready for that. So I'm gonna show you guys in that video. So make sure you guys are subscribed to the channel so you don't miss that. Now, before we actually move on to number six, if you guys tap on your viewer window of yourself, you guys will be able to see a little profile icon here at the top left corner. And when you guys press this button, it's gonna enable portrait mode while on FaceTime. Now, if you guys don't know basically what this is, it's gonna give you that whole blurred out background effect that you guys are seeing right here up on your screen right now. All right, so go ahead and moving on to number six and that is announcing notifications. So what this is actually gonna do is now Siri can announce your notifications to you without having to unlock your iPhone. If you guys have AirPods, AirPods Pro, uh, AirPods Max, or even some of Beats headphones as well, it's gonna work with those too. And it even is gonna work with CarPlay if that's something you guys have. Now, number five, and I'm saving the best for last, but number five is a new feature called Mail Protect Activity. Now, what this feature does is it's gonna hide your IP address and load and remote content privately in the background even when you guys didn't even open the message. So what this actually does is it's gonna make it harder for people sending you emails to follow your mail activity and be able to track you. Now, I personally highly recommend you guys turn this feature on and you can do what you wanna do, but I highly recommend you guys turn this feature on uh, because honestly, man, you gotta put some respect on what Apple is doing for the community when it comes to protecting your privacy when you're doing anything online. So Apple, I salute to you. All right, so number four has to deal with Siri getting an upgrade but offline. Let me explain. So now Siri will work and be able to do certain commands offline. Meaning, if you guys don't have internet access, she still is gonna be able to handle certain commands without the use of internet connection. So for example, I have my phone on airplane mode with the Wi-Fi actually turned off and I can still ask Siri to set a timer or an alarm for 1 p.m. and she doesn't need internet to do so, which to me is actually really dope. Now, number three, we are getting there, we are getting there. Number three is another feature I'm gonna love once it actually comes to the beta and that is the changes coming to the Apple wallet. So now, Apple will allow you guys to add your house keys, your car keys, even your driver's license or some form of identification right on your iPhone. To me, this is clutch because we're getting closer and closer to the days of not having to carry a wallet around anywhere we go. As of right now, the only people that are on board with this, I believe was TSA uh, at the airports, which is actually dope because I'm the guy who always either has his boarding pass on my Apple Watch or I have it on my iPhone. I still gotta pull out my license, so it kinda defeats the purpose of having it on my phone, but now, the fact that I'm gonna have everything on my phone is just clutch. Now, I'm currently not able to display it in this video, uh, but it will be in a future beta release, and I'm definitely gonna demo that here on the channel in a future video. All right, so number two feature, we getting there, <laughs> that's coming to iOS 15 that I can show you guys is within the music application. So when you guys go into your music application and you press and hold on the artist's name, you now is gonna see a pop-up that's gonna allow you guys to be able to uh, go right into the album or go into the artist page to see more of that artist's work. Another feature that's getting rolled out is spatial audio, Dolby audio, as well as lossless music. Now. I haven't experienced lossless music because I don't really have all the tools to be able to experience that, but if you have an AirPods Pro and an AirPods Max, you will be able to experience spatial audio as well as the Dolby Audio sounding as well. So this is a feature, man, that I'm personally excited for to be using and highly recommend y'all check that out. All right, so the last feature, man, number one, the number one thing, man, that I'm personally hyped for, and that is Apple's Safari browser. Now, it's gonna take some getting used to, don't get me wrong, but I definitely think it's for the better. Now, the first thing you guys are gonna notice is the 
address bar is now at the bottom of the screen versus always being at the top of the browser like we're used to, right? Now, if you guys actually scroll on the web page, you guys are gonna see the address bar is gonna minimize to the bottom of the screen. And then when you guys are actually scrolling up, it's gonna pop back up. Now, if you guys press and hold on it, you're gonna get a list of options, but the main one I want you guys to focus on is tab group. So, CK, what the heck is a tab group? Well, think of it as like a folder full of web pages that you guys can link together. So let's say you guys are going on vacation, right? And you got a whole vacation tab group. And basically within those tab groups, you have like links and web pages to different resorts, right? Think of it like that. And by doing so, it's also going to add it across all of your devices using the cloud to be able to sync your web browser activity. Now, the other cool thing that you guys can do with the address bar, if you have multiple tabs open, is just swipe to the left and the right. And it's going to take you to that tab literally super quick. Now, this is a feature that I really like and I can get behind as it is a nice addition to Safari. If we go ahead and tap on the three dots, you guys can get the option to reload that web page versus refresh the icon at the top where you guys are used to it being located. Now, if you guys press on that icon to the right, it's also gonna take you guys to a new view where you guys can see all of the web pages in one view. Now, you also can pinch on the screen and be able to take you there a little quicker and be able to close out the tab or you guys can go ahead and switch to a different tab group that you guys have saved. And the last thing you guys can do in Safari now is create a background image for Safari launch page like you can on Mac OS. So if you guys are into a new browser window and you click on edit, toggle on background image and you guys select image, it's gonna set that background image to your Safari browser and it's that simple. But you guys made it. So that is my top 11 things that you guys can do within iOS 15. Now there are a lot of other tips and tricks that I found within iOS 15, but I'm gonna share that in a whole nother video. And also be on the lookout for that iPad OS 15 where I'm gonna be breaking down all of the features in that video that's coming to iPad OS 15 because it's some fire in there too. And honestly, it's the one thing I'm most excited for. Well, if you guys have any questions, you already know, hit me up down in the comment section below. And don't forget to tell me how many likes is on this video. Thanks again for watching. I'll see y'all in the next one. Squad! <laughs>